Hey, what's up, everybody? So we are here. We're back with some more Alliance Wars tips, and this is a big one, guys. This is something that everyone should really, really take to heart. You do not have to win every single Alliance War. You are not going to win every single Alliance War. So in this Alliance War, this is War Season 3, we have personally decided to just concede this war, give up, not even try and fight, not even try and defend, and just go and farm loot. You may be wondering why we're doing that. Well, because we're getting into the harder and harder alliances that we probably have little to no chance at actually beating. We'll take a look here at their stats. So this is a rank 56. They have 40 members, or 39 members currently. Huns is a rank 32 alliance. They have 48 members. And this one over here is a Fits of Rage, rank 37. They have 39 members. And we are sitting over here with 33 members, rank 97. So, we have pretty much no chance to win this war, and there's no reason to fight, no reason to go up against this competition. The reason we're up against such tough competitions is because we've done so well in the last two wars. We took first in the first season, and we took second in the second season. So, the benefits of this is that you get to actually farm for five days, and look, I pulled up a random opponent, and the very first thing it has is it has 361,000 in gold. Massive amounts of gold right there. So we're going to go and farm and start just building our base up better, getting stronger. And this is what you can use Alliance Wars for. Even if you are losing in Alliance Wars, you should be having a whole heck of a lot of fun because you're going to be able to find a ton of loot in the random system. Because people are attacking in Alliance Wars, they're not stealing each other's loot. So there's a lot of loot for the taking. Let's see here. Cannons. Archers. And mummies. He doesn't have any R blaster, so we can take out the sword rain. If you're fighting any R blasters, you pretty much need to have a sword range so you can one shot kill them. When you're not fighting our monsters, uh, you can go in there with Sonic Blast and Blade Storm. Elite Boost our blasters are very very nasty, but if you use the sword range, they become, you know, nothing. Just like how gargoyles used to be very very nasty when they first came out. If you used the sword range and killed them in one shot, they were nothing. They were very very easy. So there's different spells and tactics that you need to utilize to kill different troops. You can't just have one cookie cutter build that kills everything. It just does not work like that. Oh, he has an elite boost spikes right there. That's very nice. Going to cause us some trouble. Trying to stay back with our troops so we can speed them up. Get them out of that death box of cannons hopefully we can survive oh we got a shield spell so we should be able to survive yeah that is a very very big death choke point right there Oh, we're going to die. The elite boosted wolf howled everyone, made them stronger, and our hero just didn't have enough life. So, no matter what, we still got a decent amount of money. Look at this. 147,000 for only getting 27%. It's still a decent amount of money. With our boost, we got it up to 180,000. That's still not bad at all, guys. So even your failures are still going to be decent. And look at that. We just, oh my god, look at that. We just one click, open up the menu, and there it is. 620,000. So let's go ahead and put Sword Rain on and attack. And the reason is because it has a ton. Ah. So unfortunately, when we swapped out those spells, someone went in head and attacked it. So 
So the reason we put Sword Rain on is because of the Arbosters. The Arbosters, you need to kill in one shot. If you don't, they are very, very nasty again. We'll go ahead and search a couple more. See what comes out. Here's 330k. Again, no Arbosters, so we'll swap back over to the Shield spell. Hopefully we don't die in the first 27% this time again. But hey, it happens. Go back and knock some of the bombs back. So he moved up a little bit too fast there, and the other cannon didn't jump over the barricade. So right there we got both cannons to jump over the barricade, able to kill them with the spell now. So now we're going to start summoning out some mummies, because there's the choke point just like last time they're all being stuck in that initial choke point so if we wait and summon out a mummy those guys will now start shifting and start moving through that choke point and you can see they'll meet us right here and now we can start summoning out more archers cannons get a shield spell on those guys so I personally love a good mix of archers and cannons and then now we're down into the 50 second mark, so we need to start summoning out mummies only, because none of the troops, the cannons or the archers, will be able to get to the castle gate at this point. Well, just as close as we can, get our Sonic Blast, Sword Rain off, and it, or Blade Storm, and we should be able to finish this right here. Oh, we're going to be like one second shy. Oh, no, we barely made it right at that zero second mark. So here, there's going to be a huge amount of loot. There's going to be like 500,000 loot with our bonuses. Like 600,000, that's huge. And these are very, very common now because of Alliance Wars. So do not worry if you are losing in Alliance Wars. I mean, try and get your Alliance to realize that you're not going to win every single fight. And that it's better just to spend some time farming and building your defenses up and building your offense up for the next war. So maybe this time you just can't win. And it's unfortunate and it's sad that you can't play in Alliance Wars, you can't compete. But take that time again to farm and get stronger and build up for the next war. Prepare. Maybe next time you can get first place. So it's not the end of the world if you get sixth place. If you get eliminated on day one or day two, it's not the end of the world, guys. It's actually a good thing. You get a farm for another three days and get tons and tons of loot. Look at that. First one we pulled up, 369,000 in loot. That's insane. That's insane. So again, even if we don't beat this base, we're going to get a decent amount of loot. trying to tag all of the buildings that I can. I have a couple of cannons now to help with the hard to reach firebolt tower over there. I'm 
run back and use the shield spell on everyone. We're going to scream to get them out of that corner. And get them off of the froster slowness. And now we're going to bring in a mummy over here. And sit behind our troops. So we're going to bring out another mummy. Scream, everyone. And come back and try and kick some of these bombs back. Because we want to try and keep our, our units alive. Let's see, unfortunately, they died. We're staying behind, hugging against the mummies and the knights. So that way we don't take as much damage, because we are pretty fragile here. There's a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to shield all those guys. And again, we're under the 50-second mark, so we're just going to spawn out mummies now. No other troops would really help us at all. They're not going to get to the castle gates. We can't go forward because we would die here. We don't have a shield on our hero. Let's go rush up and hit the castle gate at least a little bit so we can get some more percentage out of this. So we didn't get 100%. We just hit the castle gate for around 25% life. But we're still going to get a huge amount of loot, guys. It's freaking insane how much loot we're going to get. We got 443,000 loot right there. Plus, I mean, we gained all the other stuff. The medals and the trophies and all that. Yu Yang, he ha whatever you want to call it. But the loot is freaking insane for 64%. Alright, enough of me ranting about how insane the loot is. I'm going to go farm, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks, guys.